Hey, so for the last couple of weeks, I've been spending time making these buildings for this Akira scene that I'm putting together. And it's just been fun, really. It's really been a lot of fun working on this sequence and on this project, which kind of started randomly. It really wasn't even planned. Uh, ultimately, I think I'm just starting to get a little bored of it and looking to kind of wrap it up, at least for now, and move on to the next thing and then maybe come back to it later when I feel inspired again. I still love Akira. I still love this whole, this whole world. And I really hope to return to it and, and return to some of these scenes. But in the meantime, I did want to show this thing right here. So I've been kind of making the buildings for this scene right here. This, let me see if I can bring it up. This one. This scene is, this is the last kind of sequence that I want to do. And I've been working on the, um, I just kind of, you know, these all these little buildings in the background. So I have this main building made. I have some of these other ones. If you follow me on Insta or Patreon or whatever, you'll have seen my progress on this sequence. Uh, I made this building. I made this building. I think I made this building as well. And then this foreground one. As you can tell, there's a lot of stuff going on. And there's a lot of buildings that are kind of filling up the space. Buildings like this or these ones and the, kind of, you know, just kind of scattered throughout. They're pretty basic looking. So I wanted to challenge myself and just kind of sit down and make a good variety of buildings that I can then just scatter all the way around and kind of populate. Maybe I'll use geometry nodes. Maybe I'll just kind of brute force it and just duplicate a bunch of them. I don't know. Uh, but I do want to keep them relatively low poly so that it's easier to me, easier for me to make them really fast. And then also easier for me to duplicate throughout the scene. So, Here's kind of what I ended up with. And this was maybe about, I don't know, about an hour of work. And uh, yeah, I think there's a pretty healthy variety here. I just slapped on three textures. There's only three textures here for everything. They're all from Polyhaven, except for the windows. The windows are a texture that I made. Um, There's just a bunch of little windows repeating and with a good amount of variety. And then I just turned it into an animation. So if I click on that, you can see it's pretty simple. It's this windows texture, curves. Yeah, uh, there's a rooftop material, just the beige wall, again, from Polyhaven. I have this, I have their add-on that lets me get all of their textures directly into the asset browser, super handy. And then the other one is just a white plaster that I brought down the color on using an RGB curves. And that's really it. So a lot of the, you know, aesthetic of these buildings is going to come from the lighting that comes from underneath. I'll throw some examples on the screen here of how I've kind of managed to set up these scenes. With these buildings that I've made, I just want to make a brand new building and kind of show you how easy it is to make these. They're not, they're not too complicated, but they're good enough, I think, for background scenes. And then the other thing is that if I wanted to you know, have a modifier here, if you want to stack them, you can just kind of have them like this. And especially if they're in the background, uh, it's really good. Let's just make one of these buildings and I'll show you kind of how I did it. So I think I started with this one and then I took this whole entire set and then duplicated and then gave them just added loop cuts and stuff. So let's just start with a brand new one. Start one with here. I think I went wide. Just get it kind of like a rectangle shape here. Like that. And then when you kind of look at the reference here, you can kind of see that they're all pretty basic. Like this is a good example of one insets and then extrude. And then there's a little bit of decoration going on there. So let's set that up. Go to face select, inset, extrude. Maybe bring it in just a little, give it a little bit of personality. I'll duplicate this face, bring it up, add a bunch of loop cuts. And this is to this is to just create little squares and blocks for me to grab like that. I'll duplicate that. And then bring these down, just kind of bring them inside, extrude them up. And then these are a little, just things on the roof, you know, vents, things like that. Nothing really uh, obvious. Aha, I have. Uh, it's like, that's okay. I'm doing individual origin inset or scaling, and that's okay. But I do want to have them come in a little bit. So these are just to break up the silhouette to give the impression that there's 
you know, stuff up there. You can even duplicate it and rotate it. Move it over here. Give it a little bit more variety from that side. And then I'll take these and then just delete them. Trying not to get too caught up in like the details of everything because the again these buildings are going to be just in the background so they don't have to be have a ton going on but if you want to if you want to give them more detail you're definitely more than welcome to to do that so something like that that looks like a little area up there uh, let me get rid of these two actually because I think it would make it more interesting to kind of have these be in the middle like that yeah okay so then it looks like an access, an access, roof access, and then just, I don't know, uh, buildings, like little rooms with generators or something. And then let's add some of the window cuts. For a lot of these windows, you can see that there's like either a pattern or there's like these vertical cuts or these really interesting connecting lines and points. But you can see that it's not just like a full solid sheet of glass. It's usually kind of broken up with little parts in the middle or this one where it's only on the corner and the rest of it is just concrete which could be interesting if you're into that kind of thing but this whole entire shot is just really filled with a lot of good ideas on how to set up windows for your buildings this is cool or even the main building here these like little cuts inside but one thing to remember i think is kind of consistent with all of them is that the corners of the buildings don't have windows so it's just reinforcement there's always just like a buffer of windows on the corners but kind of like this at the top it looks like most of the windows stay towards the top something that's not too much but is good enough something kind of like maybe this there's also like a tendency to put a big part in the middle with windows and then the sides don't have windows you know there's like big walls on the sides and then windows in the middle so maybe let's try that i'll do a loop cut like that i'll add one up top for like the roof i'll do another one here make that like that yeah let's do it like this so we'll grab these faces and then we'll alt e extrude along normals inset them like that and then there's our window lights i'll assign it Control i to invert and then add the base concrete white plaster that's what it is o2 yeah okay so let's see how that looks all right, it's looking all right. The textures are a little misaligned, so we'll just go keep projection. That usually solves it. And then we'll select the windows, do a keep projection as well. Looks pretty good scale-wise. The plaster is a little too patchy for me. I don't like how patchy it is. It's too, I think it's too small on the UV map. So I was gonna UV editor, make it a little bit bigger so that it's more evenly distributed. Oh, I'm gonna delete this face down here. These are not really important because we're never going to see the bottom of the building. But also, if you want to array modifier, it just will like won't create any issues. Yeah, I mean th that's kind of it. You know, like sometimes I might take one of these edges and bevel them, gives them a little bit more like just just thinking about lighting, how the light will kind of maybe bounce off of that. That could look cool. Uh, and then one last thing is adding the rooftop material. So to add that. I just select the top faces and I think you can do something like, what is it, Alt-G or Shift-G. Select similar coplanar, yeah, and then that'll select everything on that same level. So I wonder if I do like this and then Shift-G. Oh, cool, okay. That makes it a little bit easier. And then once you have all these faces selected, hit I for inset and then just hold Shift. You can look down here. Uh, you can look down here at, at my mouse. You can see what I'm doing. Have all the faces selected. I, scale, and then hold shift to scale inwards. Just to kind of create a little bit of an edge around. And then we're going to extrude down, holding shift again. Then with all those faces connect selected still, we will go up here. And what did I have it as? Is it beige wall? It was. And for the beige wall, it is another polyhaven material, which I just removed the color and the displacement map, which they usually come with. All I kept is the normal and the texture uh, and the roughness, sorry. And then made the base color super dark. And 
that's that. I think that looks really nice. It looks like there's like a kind of tar material, but you can see that's the gist. And then I do have a very simple geometry nodes set up on the corner lights. Let's see where are they, there we go. If I click on the corner lights, basically what it's doing is that it's taking this shape. So icosphere is very simple with a very strong emission light on it, 10. And it is being distributed onto the points. And the way I do that is I'll show you the geometry node setup because I kind of came from a couple videos and I still don't fully understand geometry nodes, but this is the setup, super duper simple. Feel free to screenshot this, copy this, whatever you need. That's that. Uh, so let's first apply the scale of this. And then basically the way that I apply the corner lights, which I think really give the building that extra little sprinkle, literally, it feels like a sprinkle on the building, uh, like the sprinkles on a donut. What eventually, essentially what I do is, let's see, we're going to edge select, select this edge. Uh, usually when you wanna just select the outside, the furthest and tallest corners of the building, because it's like an aviation thing. It's, I don't know, you can look into it more if you want. But I just like the furthest, tallest edge, uh, you know, just like right on the edge there. And then I will duplicate it, move it away, and then right mouse click to have it come back. And while it's still selected without clicking off, I hit P, separate by selection. So in this building, you can see here, it's created another object, which is our edge. And then I go into edit mode, vertices select, or vertex select, select all, and then X, I think only edges and faces. So then it only leaves the vertices. Since it's its own object, I don't think it needs any of these. We'll go into geometry nodes and down here, click corner lights. So that'll just select the setup I already have applied to the other buildings. And um, it's referencing the corner light object, which is this thing. So it's taking all of this and applying it to all of the vertices. But yeah, that's kind of how you get those. And then like these are kind of big, bring down the scale here. Yeah, it makes them a little bit smaller. It's, it's however you wanna, I just have a value, normally it would be like this. And I just have a value plugged into it to control it all at once. Let's, let's try it, let's test it with a little array modifier action. Do Z like that, bring it down a bit. For some of these buildings, uh, at, like for this one in the middle, at the bottom I have this little lip that is extruded, and that's for things like this. So because the texture kind of clips here, it's not a perfect, it's not a seamless texture, which from a distance, it's okay. But if you wanted to add a little bumper at the very bottom of this building, let's say we go like, I'm just gonna show you. If we do a little like that, it'll kind of create a separation between the levels in a sense. So it feels not as jarring when the texture clips. So you can do that or you can not do that, it's up to you. But now that we have this distance set up, we kind of do that. And I mean, that looks, that looks pretty good. Pretty good to me. All right, well, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want these buildings, you can get them on my Patreon uh, or just keep an eye out on Gumroad. They'll, they might, aim. Then they may or may not end up on there eventually, uh, but if you want them, you can definitely get them on the the Patreon in the in the in the tier that I give away stuff on. Um, but if you want to follow the progress, you can just follow me on socials or subscribe. That'll be plenty. Uh, thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.